wholeness. Welcome to my channel. My name is Rashida Silvertree and today's topic is about love. It's about love. <laughs> Mainly relationships, but let's get into it. Why relationships are transactional and are never based in unconditional love. Uh-oh. This is primarily from my own personal adult experiences that I have had, okay? And from, let's see, I'm 35 now, so let's go back hmm, 20 years ago. 20 years ago, I was 15 years old, okay? And my perception of love was this romanticized one woman, one man, a knight in shining armor, someone willing to be loyal, someone willing to be true, someone willing to defend my honor and someone so respectful and just I was enough more than enough for him and he'd be more than enough for me and it would just be this 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 perfect equality balanced relationship and just everything would be right in the world and we would meet young and healthy and we would just have this beautiful children and what well I mean it was okay a lot of books I read in the romantic parts of the story, it was always like that anyway. A, a lot of what I read um, was fantasy, sci-fi, some kind of like, you know, drama type of book, sagas, you know, if you will, or epic adventure stories. And I, my mind would just go and fantasize about that one special person. Well, as an adult throughout the years, I've had to... Uh, learn through mistakes, through repeating mistakes, <laughs> through teaching others, um, through heartbreak, through betrayal, through um, moving too fast or not moving enough, um, not quickly enough anyway. And so why? Why would I say that? And why are relationships transactional and not really built on unconditional love? This is what I find very, um, I think, frustrating as a 35-year-old woman now. We must understand that when we meet someone new and we meet someone that we vibe with, there are many different factors that come into play, okay? When you feel that innate attraction towards someone and that we often mistake for love. It's lust, hormones, genetics, biology, and circumstance, okay? Whether you are um, going to the same school, the same college, or you you're both find each other on a dating app, you both find each other when you both are invested in a hobby and you meet at a club or you, you know, or you meet on a hike or you meet you know, at a book club or something like that. Um, and then there's lust. There's this, because especially if you're young in your 20s, 30s, or 40s, like you're, you have urges. You have like, you know, we're biologically and genetically built to be attracted to who we're attracted to, whether that's man, man, woman, woman, man, woman. We're just built to just gravitate towards that. That's our body. That is that biological genetic need to reproduce and to copy and to have those certain traits that we're attracted to so that we can reproduce and keep the hum human species going, right? And now a lot of, a lot nowadays, a lot of that's being effed with, right? You have women taking birth control, you know, which it, it messes with that natural flux I've read, um, which is very interesting. I, I forgot the name of the article, how a woman can take birth control and for several years and it it like mutes her attraction towards a lover you know like and like when she gets off the birth control her attraction for her lover like is 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 weird it's not natural she finds herself she's not really attracted to him because the birth control pills did something 
to her hormones, which kind of, sh it shuts something off. I forgot. It's a really interesting um, article. But, you know, you have GMO. You have uh, our waters being tampered with, you know, with heavy metals. You have them spraying crap in the sky and poisoning our crops with the same uh the same uh, with with chemicals we don't have biodiversity anymore in our foods it's just making us weaker um as a as a species right and that that takes a huge hit on us i think socially and culturally over time we don't know the effects of this in the next hundred to two three four hundred years if we if our species are alive that long um <laughs> You know, given all of the the fast paced developments and advancements in in um and and stuff in our in our in our world, but we have just you know this innate when we meet someone and we have that attraction, it's like oh I'm so in love, I'm so in love with you, and it's not love at all, right? It's it's it when we commit our, ourselves to someone it's basically off of whatever social economic influence that you're into or that either you're raised in or that you're into because you can you know be raised in a highly christian religious uh come from a religious background where it's one woman one man but then you choose to become polyamorous or you want to you have interest in polygamy something that goes against the grain and how you you were raised right or you stick with what you know and with monogamy because that's how you were raised, that's what you were exposed to. So you stick with what you know and then so you have these ingrained, conditioned ways of doing things or you do things in your own free will. But we must understand some things here and I'm going to clarify it. Every time you're committing yourself to a partnership or partnerships, you ha will have expectations you will have rules you will have regulations you will have all uh, like all these things and conditions that must be followed e, i'm sorry hippy dippy people out there who are polyamorous and you have multiple lovers no shade to you but there are expectations within your little circle right right there must be like in polyamorous polygamous relationships you're not going to just allow anybody and everybody to just sleep with anybody and everybody no no your expectation is let's communicate right let's touch base with each other let's make sure that everyone is clean and we're in their you know they're getting testing done right mm-hmm those are expectations and rules and regulations and conditions, especially for people who are monogamous, especially for people who really are very traditional and they marry. Marriage is their their thing. And a marriage is a perfect example. There's so many rules, so many regulations, so many expectations, so much that goes into certain role playing. Like I'm the man, I do this, this, and this. You're the you're the woman, you do this, this, and this. Okay, or you can choose to switch it up. You know, the man stays at home, the woman works, doesn't matter, right? It's about what you make it, but whatever you're making, you, you, have, you have a lot of limitations in it. There's no real true freedom in any relationship. And that is where the practice of unconditional love comes in. I think it's, it's I think it's okay as to to have expectations and to have regulations and rules and and being upfront for what you want to experience in a relationship but just know that you become a prisoner to all of those expectations you become a prisoner to all of those rules and regulations and conditions everyone every human being isn't it's meant every human being wants to be free married or no Polyamor polyamorous or no, we naturally want to be free, woman or man. We want to be free in movement. We don't want to be uh, possessed. We don't want to be limited in our growth. You have a lot of people who are compliant 
right? They're compliant with it. Oh, the right thing is to get married or the right thing is, you know, to to have multiple partners and to honor her and to honor his wishes. You have that too. But I really wanted to point out here when you the like relationships are a spiritual practice. Marriages are a spiritual practice. Whatever form they're in, whether you have multiple partners or you have just one, it doesn't matter. And yes, I grew up in a culture, right? I grew up in the States, but I also grew up in a culture where I was exposed to both. Oh, didn't know that, did you? <laughs> I was exposed to both. I really was. And I, you know, and it was interesting. It wasn't what, like, it was a, I'll get into it probably in another video, but it's just this like, it, all of that is a spiritual practice. I don't, I don't find anything wrong with stating what your expectations are. I'm sorry, if you go into a relationship with no, absolutely no expectations, rules, regulations, or conditions, woo, you're gonna be in for it. You, you're gonna be surprised and you're gonna get anything and everything. Anything and everything. If you literally meet someone and say, I don't care what your background is, I don't care what your sexual preferences are, I don't care about this or that, this, that, and this, and this, and that, and that, and this. Yeah, right. Everybody does. Everybody cares. No matter your, who you choose to sleep with or how many, everybody cares. But the key to this discussion is unconditional love and the practice of it. Unconditional love sets you free from the expectations and limitations, rules and regulations, reg resolutions. Oh my God. Rules and regulations and conditions that you make and create for yourself. What is unconditional love? What unconditional love is true liberation. It is true non-attachment. It is you allowing the other to be. The expectations that you have for that person have been stated but you release them from it. That's true love. There, there's a lot of obligation for people to go a certain way, to be a certain way, to love a certain way. Unconditional love is you love, love is love. You allow the love that comes naturally, that's embedded within our soul and our being to be expressed and it is received with ease. No expectation, no limitation, no condition, no regulation. We must start being honest with ourselves and with each other about this. When people say they put on a mask and they shape shift all the time, I'll become the woman he wants me to be. I'll become the lover he wants me to be. I'll become the lover she wants me to be. All for naught. All for naught. You end up being mad at the person because they can't meet your expectation. You end up, you end up possessing and getting upset because they're not meeting your expectation. You mean your prison. It's a prison. A lot of marriages become a prison for a lot of people. Because the other isn't letting them, they're, they're putting shackles on them. This is what you can't do. This is how you need to talk to me. This is how you do this. This is how you, and this is how, I'm, oh my gosh, it's suffocating. That's why unconditional love should be part of it. You cannot exclude unconditional love. And a lot of relationships lack that. They lack that practice. It's transactional. You give this to me, I give this to you. It, it's just nature. You provide a home, I will take care of it. 
We produce children together. I do this with them, you do that with them. If in a perfect, perfect world, all of that, all of that would be balanced. Everyone would be happy. Marriages wouldn't have any issues. You know, counseling and therapy wouldn't be needed, but uh oh, we have the human ego. We have expectations, rules, regulations, and conditions. That we, we literally lie to ourselves when we meet someone because we get caught up in the hormonal, lustful, genetic, bio and genetic and biological mess that attracts us to that person. And we call that love. For two to three years, we literally will call that love until those hormones even out. And then you begin to see the mask comes off and this is the real person. This is what I really need from you. What can save a lot of time, which I'm going to make another video on. Yeah, I'll make another video on this, but I'll touch on it lightly. Asking the other person what they need from you. What do you need from me? How can I make your life better? How can you make mine better? What are we doing here? The true mask of a person doesn't come off until two to three years into the relationship. Especially if the attraction's strong, the physical attraction, whoo, it it can throw you for a spin. You're obsessed with the with the you know the parts. Everything that they they do and say is magic. Every little thing she does is magic. I swear, it feels like you're on top of the world. You're high on high. <laughs> they say that. Being in love is like, you're, it's like a form of mental illness. It really like, and I believe it is. It's temporary though. It's temporary, but literally you can't breathe without the other person. You're constantly obsessing and thinking about them. And this is normal. Like it's a very human thing, but we just need to identify what is and what isn't. I'm so in love with him. Okay, hun, that's your hormones. That's your genetics, your biology. That the that the that is the physical attraction to them. And for me, because with my highly sensitive behind, I need more than that. I need more than just the physical. I've met many beautiful people in my life. And then I'm like, nah. <laughs> Because I need, I need like cerebral stimuli. I need emotional stimuli. Like I need more. Physicality, it's like, okay, you hit a wall with that. Some people, that's all that they want. That's all that they need. And then they figure out they need way more than that. And after two to three years, those, those hormone levels you level out. That mask drops down and then you get the real core of the person. It happens a lot. And in marriages, you must understand my monogamous people. You must understand an individual human being is a walking, talking universe. Multi-universe, really. They have so many aspects of themselves that are untapped. They're not going to be, the, the, the person you're with is not going to be the same person in five years time, 10 years time, 15 years, 20 years at all. They're going to be a completely different person most of the time. I'm not saying completely different, but things change, weight gain or loss of weight, their ideologies, their political perspectives, their demands, their interests, their hobbies or lack thereof, mental illness, situational depression. You have a lot of stuff that takes place in the whole one 
human lifetime and you choose to commit yourself with that one person through all of that, that's powerful. Mad respect to my married peeps, okay? Mad respect to you. Because that is all, that's a deep, deep spiritual thing right there. Polyamorous people, people with multiple partners, that's also, I think, very spiritually advanced because that means you're very solid within yourself. You're, you're very centered. You know what you want. You know what you do not want. It, it, to me, if you are confused and you out here with multiple partners, God help you. Okay. God help. God, pray for guidance. But I have met people that were pretty solid within themselves, knew what they want, what they did not, and they did what they, they were into what they were into. But that also brings out a lot of stuff, a lot of wounds like jealousy, abandonment, all that stuff that in a monogamous relationship because someone <laughs> that you, you're, that one person said, I promise I'll be with you forever and ever, no matter what. And so like that, that's comfortable. But that comfort is tested when you when you're with multiple people. Mhm. Mm oh my gosh. So I didn't mean for this video to be so long, but it's just so interesting now that I am in a new cycle of my life, a new season in my life, and you know, and I'm single now and wiser now, and I have a different perspective on things, right? And so back on the transactional, like, yeah, you give and you receive and you receive and you give. But that doesn't mean that it's based in love, unconditional love. I'm so sorry, but no, you, you think it is, but it's not. A lot of the time you have, let's say wealthy, wealthy couples out there, right? And it's a give and take because one is providing for the other. It's solely for survival. For a soft life, this is what I'm able to, to provide for you. I can give you children. I can keep up with the house. You know, I can entertain you. If you can provide a six-figure income, if you can provide you know, good love making from time to time. And if you can do these things for me and set our family up so I can live a soft life. Yes, many relationships are like that and both, uh, both parties agree. But that doesn't mean it's based on unconditional love. Or you have the hard life, I like to call it, where both parties have to work full time, okay, to make it. <laughs> All right, and there's nothing wrong with that either. Right? It's so it's so interesting how like the dynamics in relationships with with human to human relationships. It's very very interesting to me now that I have this new perspective. You got to know your role. But if you want to take your your polygamy or polyamory on a deeper level, if you want to take your monogamy in a deeper level, Invite unconditional love in there and be amazed what's unlocked in you. I've seen polyamorous people where they, they, oh, it's love, free love. I just love this being so much. Oh. And it's purely just lust. There's no depth in the connection. It's just purely possession. I find all types of relationships can really be possessive. It's all egoic. And when you have sexual chemistry in the mix, that can make things, it can muddy a lot, really and truly. So, food for thought, food for heart, food for you to ingest if you will. If you don't, you don't like it, you know, you're like, I don't agree with what you're saying at all. That's perfectly fine. I don't care. Okay. 
But if you do find what I'm saying useful, I'm just inter it's interesting to me, like relationships now. At first, I was so, when I was so much younger, I was so obsessed about like, love, love is love. Oh my God, I'm going to find and be with the, like naturally I feel like I'm built for one, one man, okay? One man, one woman. I, it's just easier for me. But not everyone is and they lie about it. <laughs> You know, just because it it seems a lot more virtuous and a man's more respected when he has D-discipline, if you know what I mean. D-discipline, right? Like he can just, you know, settle down, right? Or some men are, it's celebrated for men to have multiple partners. And now you, you have women who act like men and they... They have multiple partners with dudes. It's like, oh, look at me. It's like sexual freedom, sexual liberation. Call it whatever you want. Not really my vibe, but I'm not, I'm not knocking anybody. I just, I, the dynamics are very interesting. But welcoming unconditional love to liberate yourself from, from the shackles of your own expectations for someone else or even for yourself that's powerful. So that's all. Thank you.